It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, I'm continuing my coverage of the Paco Game games here, these tiny little boxes, each one with a whole game in there. This is Paco Game Set 2. Uh, the designer, Chris Handy, has put out eight games. He, he did so some time ago. Well, he's gone back now to this project and put out eight more games, and today I'm taking a look at this one right here. So, so is a set collecting kind of game which uses a Mancala style mechanism to collect flowers, to grow those flowers and then collect them into your own bouquet for the most victory points. I'm gonna give you a look at it in just a second. I'm also going to rank this one against the other seven games just for fun. And I'm also gonna rank it against all 16 games in uh, the project here, these eight and the original eight. So let's take a look at this and then we'll come right back. So here's what the game looks like set up and ready to begin. You lay out the cards in this pattern, you lay them out randomly and you put the gopher card opposite the windmill card and you are ready to begin. What you're attempting to do is gather the most flowers for the most victory points. Every player has a secret color under the wheelbarrow here of the flowers that they prefer. So in this case I have the, the greenish blue there and I'm hoping to acquire the most of those because they'll be worth more points to me. So let's take a peek at one of these. These are just the seeds of course but when you flip it over there is a flower there with two colors. The back, by the way, is a hint as to the petal color. And if I acquire this card, the very center of the card is, in fact, my secret color, this would be three victory points to me. If it's the petals that are that color, it's two victory points. And if there's no match at all, that's still one victory point. So uh, you definitely want to get as many flowers as possible, but preferably your matching color. To begin the game, each player is going to, on their turn, they're going to pick a line of cards, pick them up, and uh, seed them around the board following the order set by the uh, windmill over here, which is, in this case is going clockwise, all right? So uh, let's say, for example, that I am going to pick this pile right here. I'll pick them all up. There has to be at least two, so not, not one, more than, more than one. And then I'm going to drop one off in whatever order I want to, clockwise, until I drop off the last one. At that point, any bags of seed matching the one I've just dropped off will bloom, and so both of these white ones would become the flowers. And you flip those over and that's it. If uh, that ever happens in someone's wheelbarrow, then the active player is going to pick a color of flower uh, once a flower arrives at another one, uh, not, not when they become flowers, but after that. And then the player whose wheelbarrow that is is going to acquire every flower of that kind. And so let's mix up the example here. Let's say I've picked some up over here and I've dropped one off, dropped one off, dropped one off, and then lastly dropped this one off. It's myself. This is my own wheelbarrow. Let's assume it's my own turn. I would probably say white because I'd like to collect both of these. However, if the case had been that this flower is here and the last one I drop off is there, I might say yellow, for example, because I, I'm, I want this player to only take one card. And they, that goes to the player sitting right here at that wheelbarrow. And I'm also hoping to keep this one in play because I'd like to take it. That's my secret color. And so that's how that works. You continue doing this. Uh, the flowers, of course, will begin to, to go away as you play the game. Uh, and most points at the end is the winner. The one more thing, uh, I, uh, the other thing I want to explain is the the special cards, the gopher card here and the windmill. If they ever end up in the same location, wherever that may be, whether it was your final drop off or not, it does not matter, then you are also going to deal with that. You're going to select one of the two special actions, do it and flip the card over to indicate the other side, all right? The windmill is very easy. It simply changes the direction of play. And so you'll, you'll seed cards this way, and so these two sync up and a player wants to flip this over and then they will go the other way with the picking up the cards and dropping them off. The gopher is different. The gopher, if you do that action, you pick all the flowers in one place and they go away. And then the other side has a watering can, which allows you to, when you trigger that ability, take any one flower anywhere and put it in your bouquet. So you can just take one. Doesn't matter where it is right now. 
And so that's basically it. And this is going to continue throughout the game. So let's let's take back our example here and let me go through just a couple of moments of how this works. Where was this? Ah, that's close enough. So I'll go first and I'll do uh, this. I'll do one, two, flip over both of these. It'll then be this player's turn here and they're going to do one, two, and these will flip over. It is then that player's turn and they might do, uh, oh, I don't know, one, two, flip just that one over. It is then this player's turn. Uh, what are they going to do? Oh, I don't know. They'll do this. One, two, flip this one over. Back to me. Uh, hmm. What do I want to do? I might take all of these. And I might say, do this. One, two, three, four, five. And there's no, uh, the gopher was the last thing, so no flower there. This player would do, let's say, these four. So they might do one, two, three, four. They'll pick for themselves red, of course. And they'll take all three of these. And that becomes the beginning of their bouquet. I really hope that their secret color is red. I don't actually know. Oh, yes, very good. And so that's basically it. You continue until there are uh, only a few of these cards in, in play, and then you figure out your score. Most victory points, of course, is the winner of the whole thing. I tend to enjoy Mancala-style mechanisms. I, I think they are a little bit underused, actually. I, I, there seems to be a ton of rock, paper, scissors style games, but not a lot of Mancala-style games. This idea of grabbing something and then moving in a line or whatever shape, dropping things off one at a time. So I was in, uh, I was surprised when I saw that this is, uh, that that's what this was, and a little curious, uh, sort of, I wasn't sure where this one was going to land for me. It seemed uh, interesting, but I wasn't sure if all the parts were going to gel together. Like, you know, do I need to have a secret color in this game? Uh, the series of games here, the pack of games, there's a lot of secret color scoring in them, and this one Again, from the outside, before I played, I thought, here too? Does this one need a secret color scoring? Well, I'm happy to say everything works very well in this one. I really do enjoy it. I like the, uh, I like the thinkiness of this one. It's not brain burning, but you do have a lot of tactics in it. You know, you, you have to respond to the board situation at any given moment, and I enjoy that. Now, this one is ranked... Uh, to uh, you know, according to Perplex own um, sort of scale that they set, they give it a one, a two, or a three right here on the side of the box. One being casual, two intermediate, three they call challenging. This is a three, and I would say for the the you know the the weight of games that they are going with here, that falls right in line with what's been happening in the other games. A three, one that's going to give you things to think about, one that's going to have a nice amount of interest and choices. Very much like this one. Uh, I would recommend it, of course, for people who enjoy this, the, the tactics. It's not real, you know, long-term strategy here, but if you love being able to spot a pattern and take advantage of it, spot a clever move and take advantage of it, then I think you're going to enjoy this one. Among the eight games in this set, this one is my number three. So I very much like this one. Uh, I would, again, really recommend it among the entire set of 16 games, then so is my number 7. There are a lot of strong games in the original set, but I would say the original game, the original set of 8, and you can go check out those reviews, by the way, which have been out for some time from me, I would say that there were a lot of, there were some really, really strong games, and some pretty weak games, obviously, in my opinion. I think this set of eight is a tighter clump in the middle. There are some good games, but there are, you know, there's fewer games that I'm just like, no, I'm completely done with that one, you know. So it's a little tighter clumping in the center. So very, very strong. I am going to give this one a seal of approval, and I recommend you check it out. It's surprising the interest and the amount of game that is in this little pack. It exemplifies the entire project here in a very nice way. Cool theme. Well done, artwork. I dig it. Check it out. That's so.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.